When the Mac Mini M1 with the Apple Silicon chip came out, I went out and bought one immediately. And I love the thing. It's fantastic desktop computer. Unfortunately, I bought the cheapest lowest end model, which was not a great idea. Now, the memory is not expandable. It's eight gigs and that's okay, but not great. The problem for me is the storage. This thing came with 256 gigs of storage. And frankly, that's not enough to synchronize my Dropbox. Now I had been using external drives, but I decided to buy something different. I bought this uh, OWC MiniStack STX and I'm gonna unbox that today for Gestalt IT. So back in 2020, the uh, Apple M1 or Apple Silicon processors came out and they are fantastic. They, uh, I assume that you probably know this, but essentially they are an ARM based system with um, high performance cores and high efficiency cores. There's basically four of each in the original M1. Uh, they came out with this Mac mini back then, um, which is uh, again, a great desktop computer. It's got decent graphic performance. It's got really solid CPU performance. Everything is great about it except that nothing's expandable. The memory is actually part of the processor and cannot be expanded no way, no how. The storage as well is soldered onto the motherboard. You can't just open it up and add a drive like you used to be able to. Now for a long time, what I was doing was I was just using external drives. So for example, this is a 500 gig uh, portable SSD. Um, it, uh, you know, it's USB 3, so I bought a cable that has native uh, USB-C on one end and USB-B uh, 3 on the other end. Um, the problem is these things kind of suck. They're not that fast. Um, another big problem is that it doesn't actually mount these external drives very quickly on boot up, which means that um, I'm trying to put my Dropbox on here and uh, often, in fact, most of the time, um, when you boot into Mac OS, uh, the Dropbox doesn't work because the drive isn't booted yet and it can't find its location. So you have to exit Dropbox and restart Dropbox. The other problem is that external drives, uh, frankly, don't provide a lot of um, uh, performance uh, necessarily. Also, you, you know, they can get wiggled, they can get jogged, um, you know, the cat can step on them and then things don't work. So um, external drive, not such a good idea. What I wanted was the ability to expand the storage in the Mac Mini. Now, of course, like I said, you can't do that natively. But remember, Apple adopted Thunderbolt a few years back, actually quite a few years back, and Thunderbolt is frickin' magic. Um, Thunderbolt, if you don't know, is not just USB, but faster. It's actually USB, but better, because each of these Thunderbolt ports actually has PCI Express on it. And what does that mean? Well, it means that if you attach something that is a Thunderbolt something instead of a USB something, it's faster, but it's also more integrated with the system. And that's really important because essentially what you're getting is the ability to expand these guys um, even though they're not expandable. So basically any Thunderbolt port, like these USB-C ports on the back of this Mac mini, is the equivalent of the PCI Express card slot that's inside a full-size desktop computer. You can put a uh, video, you can put all sorts of stuff on this. And so um, one of the, the cool devices out there, and this is what we're gonna be unboxing today, is a dock, a multi-port uh, capable external dock that's made to expand the storage and also the ports of this Mac mini I'm um, really looking forward to trying this out. So let's take a look at this. So this is the OWC um, Mini Stack STX. I'm a big fan of Otherworld Computing, also known as Mac Sales. We've bought a lot of stuff from them over the years, and it's always great because they focus on the Mac market specifically. So we have a bunch of their docks. I've also bought a bunch of cables, a bunch of random stuff. I've even bought used Macs from them because uh, it's a good deal, honestly. Um, this guy is really interesting because basically this is an expandable, um, uh, well, they, they call it a, a storage and Thunderbolt hub expansion solution, STX. But what it really is, is a Thunderbolt attached, meaning PCI Express, um, combination device. Think of it as almost a docking station for a Mac mini. Now, I think I should start off by saying that this thing can actually be used with anything that has Thunderbolt, um, Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 4. Frankly, with an adapter, you could even hook this up to an original Thunderbolt 1 device and it would work. But it's designed to be a match for the Mac Mini. It's designed to sit underneath the Mac Mini. It's the same size 
and it's also designed to give the Mac Mini some of the things that it doesn't have. Notably, a uh, full-size 3.5-inch hard drive bay, an M.2 NVMe SSE, SSD bay, and some additional ports, including um, four more Thunderbolt ports, which is kind of amazing. So let's take a look at inside the box here. So uh, inside we get uh, OWC's very simple instructions. Um, we have the uh, box O cables um, and power supply. Now this is one thing that I don't love about this solution and that's that it has a big honkin' external power supply. Um, that's pretty big. I mean, just for comparison, <laughs> this is the Mac Mini and this is OWC's power supply. Mac Minis now don't have an external power supply. They just have a cord. The power supply is built in. And in fact, if you open up this box, it's mostly empty because Apple has miniaturized everything so well, but the OWC still uses this giant thing. That's okay. I'll stick it under the desk. I'll never look at it. Another thing that this comes with, and this is really important, surprisingly, is it comes with an, a Thunderbolt 4 cable. Now, why is this important? Because Thunderbolt cables are really expensive. They're fragile, they're finicky, and um, a little guy like this, this might be a $40 or $50 cable if you didn't get it with the dock, which is kind of nuts. This whole package was under $300. Um, the cables are just really fancy in order to be able to carry the kind of data that Thunderbolt carries. For, for comparison, this, this cable can, can carry 240 watts of power and 40 gigabits of data. And in fact, the same cable is going to be used for USB-C 5 and Thunderbolt 5, and it'll be carrying 120 gigabits, theoretically, of data over that little guy. So no wonder it's so expensive. But anyway, it comes with a cable. Yes, thank you. Um, let's take a look at the dock itself. So again, OWC has, has made a number of these um, Mac Mini themed devices over the years. Um, they are all designed to look a lot like a Mac Mini, to be sized exactly like a Mac Mini. Like they have one that's a hub and they've had ones that were USB based expansion. But this guy is special because it's Thunderbolt, which means that it attaches with PCI Express and so you get full performance from the Mac Mini to the uh, Thunderbolt device. So here on the back, um, we have uh, four Thunderbolt ports. Um, those can be used for input or output. Um, they're also powered Thunderbolt ports, so you can attach powered devices. That's one reason that it came with this giant honkin' power supply, because theoretically you could put quite a lot of power on the end of this thing. Uh, this is a 180 watt power supply, so you could actually um, have all sorts of external devices that are powered, bus powered on this thing, operating at full speed. Um, it's also got uh, Kensington lock, uh, which is great. Mac Mini doesn't. And um, like I said, it looks just like a Mac Mini in terms of size. Now, I don't love that it's black. Uh, I bought the silver Mac Mini. Um, even if you bought the space gray Mac Mini, it's not the right color. Uh, these used to be silver, but now they're black, whatever. Um, I also don't know exactly how I'm supposed to hook this thing up. Like, do I want the ports facing me, the user, or do I want them facing behind me? And if I do, am I gonna have to fiddle and fidget for them? Another thing this thing is lacking that I kind of wish it had is an SD card slot. I have a um, Mac Studio desktop and it has an SD card slot on the front, which is great. Um, it would have also been nice if it had a um, USB port on the front, again, um, so that I don't have to futz around behind the machine. But these are, you know, nits. Um, we can set it down there and as we can see, it really is almost exactly the same size as the Mac Mini and it makes a nice little stack. Uh, kind of a mini stack you know, with storage and Thunderbolt expansion. Hey, that's what it's called. Um, you know, looking around the back, uh, we've got that. This little cable is not very long, but it's probably long enough that you could orient the thing 100 or 90 degrees off. I don't think you could do 180 degrees though. So um, anyway, that's, you know, some options. Let's take a look inside and uh, see what we've got for expansion inside this thing. Oh, there it is. Ta-da! And it's open. Um, so this is the inside of the uh, Mini Stack STX. Um, 
as you can see, it's it's pretty bare inside um, because there's not a lot going on in here. Um, essentially, the entire mini stack STX is this circuit board right here and this extend uh, port board right here. There's a fan um, and that's about it. But that's about all it needs. Um, so let's take a look at what we've got here. Um, we've got an M.2 slot. This is a 2280 slot that can handle... Um, I think that it's PCIe 3 only, but um, we'll correct that if, I, if I'm wrong. Uh, we've also got um, a SATA port here for hard drives. It's designed so that you can use uh, either two and a half or three and a half inch hard drives, uh, which is great because not everybody still has um, the big guys. And that's kind of it. Now I've got some stunt devices here to kind of show you how they fit. So this is an old two terabyte uh, Seagate Barracuda hard drive. Um, slide right in there. There's some screws that come up from the bottom, hold it in place. Um, just to show you that it also works with uh, two and a half inch hard drives. You know, this is an old Seagate uh, four terabyte um, hard drive. There we go, works perfectly. And um, also we've got a uh, M.2 drive. Now this is a uh, Western Digital Black M.2 drive that we got from uh, Tech Field Day. So thank you, Western Digital. Um, and as you can see, it's a 2280 drive, so it fits right in here and it uh, screws right down. There's also a thermal pad right here to dissipate the heat from the M.2. And um, that's pretty much it. The idea is that essentially you would put an M.2 drive in here, may, you know, put a hard drive in here, attach it to the Mac Mini, and it's as good as an internal um, attached storage device is gonna be. Um, and then of course you can also put other kinds of things too. So I've got the uh, Ministack STX up and running and connected with my Mac Mini and everything looks good so far. So uh, I have noticed a couple of things about it though. Number one, there is a little bit of fan noise. Um, I guess that's to be expected, but it's a little noisier than the Mac Mini itself was. Uh, number two is that it appears that you can only connect it to one of the four Thunderbolt 4 ports on the back. It's the one with the little picture of the computer next to it. Who knew? Um, number three, is that it's not as fast as you would think. So I'm using a WD Black um, uh, NVMe SSD. Um, it's only got an X1 uh, PCIe link and it's only running about uh, 700 megabytes per second uh, read and write, which is good, but not great. Um, this is uh, actually running against the uh, internal drive and you can see that the internal drive on the Mac Mini, uh, now remember this is the smallest one, so it's got only one chip um, it's also uh, kind of full, um, so it's not maybe as fast as you would expect, but it's still running at 1600 megabytes per second write and uh, almost 3000 megabytes per second read. If I switch over to the um, NVMe drive that I installed, again, this is a, a WD Black NVMe drive, so it should be fairly quick, um, but I think that what you'll see is that it's not nearly as quick as, as we would have hoped. So let's give that a shot. Um, just exactly 700 megabytes per second uh, write speed and unsurprisingly just exactly 700 megabytes uh, well actually 780 megabytes per second read speed so what this tells me is that this thing is throttled by the bus and again i think that's because it's only using one pcie lane and that's basically all it can do it's probably reserving the rest of the pcie bandwidth for the other uh, expansion ports and so on but that being said, this is still plenty fast enough for use as uh, your Dropbox folder, your uh, documents folder, um, compiling, all that kind of stuff. And it is, um, the cool thing about it is because it's PCIe, it's gonna boot up real quick as soon as you boot the machine. So if you move your Dropbox folder over to it, um, it'll just live there and everything will work fine. Um, the other thing, of course, is that, you know, you can actually connect external devices to this thing. And so I can plug in this USB SSD that I had been using um, as my Dropbox folder and it'll just come right up and work. So overall, I'd say that this is a successful uh, experiment. Um, it definitely makes my Mac Mini a lot more useful. Uh, the fact that it's a generic Thunderbolt 4 device is also useful too, because let's say I don't want this Mac Mini anymore. Um, you can use this on a, uh, with a regular MacBook. You can use it with the next generation Mac Mini. You can use it with the Apple Studio. You can use it with whatever, because it's honestly just a generic device. And it'll give you a hard drive spot, uh, uh, M.2 SSD, and um, 
a few more ports no matter what you're hooking it up to. So overall, I'd say that this is a real lifesaver when it comes to those of us who bought the wrong Mac Mini. Um, and again, at under $300, it's a pretty good value too. Thanks for watching. Uh, we've got more of these videos at YouTube. Just go to Gestalt IT video on YouTube. You'll see us doing some unboxing videos there, but of course you'll also see us do our normal thing, which is uh, covering the news of the enterprise IT space. We have a weekly uh, news rundown program. We also have two weekly podcasts that you'll find there. And of course you can learn more about us by going to gestaltit.com.